As they all watched enviously, Iris happily opened the package. When she pulled out the gift, everyone immediately gasped in surprise. Inside the box was a lustrous green emerald bracelet. This bracelet is beautiful. I hope it didn't cost you too much. Not much, Mom. Just about $30,000. Vito, you're more than a son-in-law to me. You're a wonderful young man and a welcome addition to our family. After Ira said this, she gave Dorothy a haughty look. Kevin suddenly put down his coffee and got up to leave the room. Dorothy, why did your son-in-law just leave? Could it be that his tiny little company doesn't allow him to take a day off? A few of the other women heard this and couldn't help but laugh. Just as some of them were thinking of leaving, Kevin came back with a red gift bag in his hand. Before they entered the cafe earlier, he'd already expected something like this would happen. So he texted Adriana and asked her to buy something special for him to present to his mother-in-law. Mom, Lily and I have been married for a long time now, and I've never given you anything decent. This gathering seems like a nice place to present you with something to show you how much you mean to me. How did you find that so quickly, Kevin? Did you just grab it from one of the shops down the street? The room grew silent as she opened the velvet box to reveal a sparkling diamond necklace. Do you like it, Mom? But Dorothy's friend still didn't believe that it was a genuine diamond necklace. How could someone like Kevin afford to buy something so expensive? Just then, one of Dorothy's classmates walked over to her and asked, May I take a look at your necklace? I just studied jewelry appraisal in college and I'd be happy to give you my opinion. A few minutes later, the woman raised her head and then gave Kevin a puzzled look. In my opinion, these diamonds are all real. Judging from the color and size of them, they're all top quality. This necklace has a value of at least $200,000. Her friends were envious and started commenting on how lucky she and Lily were to have Kevin in their family. One of them even invited them to visit them at their home. Lily and Kevin left soon after and drove back to Corwin Tower. I'm very curious to know what kind of friend would give you a necklace that's worth over $200,000. Oh, it's just a friend who borrowed some money from me a while back. Lily could tell that Kevin was hiding something, but she didn't want to start an argument. She just shook her head silently. When they returned home, Kevin went to the study and pulled out the box that Dominic gave him and looked at the special blend of supplements. Then he opened one of the books that Officer Emmett had let him borrow and flipped through it. After carefully mixing everything and drinking the entire glass, Kevin sat down on the living room couch. He didn't feel any different at first, but about a half an hour later, he let out a long breath and felt a surge of energy. The next morning, Lily got a call from her family. They were having another meeting. She went down to the lobby and took a taxi to the Jones Mansion. Now that the KWTD Corporation has invested $300 million to help us get through this crisis, we only have 40% of our company's shares left. Do any of you have some ideas about what we should do next? My suggestion is to forget about the 60% that we've lost. Let's sell off 10% of the shares we have left. We can use that as seed money to start a new company who would be willing to buy any of our shares. I have a friend who definitely has enough money to buy 10% of our shares. Grandma, have you ever heard of Lucas Merriweather? Suddenly, the entire room filled with chatter. Everyone was surprised that Jason knew him personally. After all, he had dozens of martial arts schools, not just in Chicago, but across the country. All right, Jason, call Mr. Merriweather right away. Jason nodded, took out his phone, and called his friend. Jason put his phone on speaker mode. Hello, Mr. Merriweather. The Jones family is planning to sell some shares. We'd rather sell them to you than to some strangers. So I'm wondering if you're interested. Why don't we find a place to meet face to face? I'm in Chicago right now. That's great, Lucas. Have your driver take you to the Jones mansion. About a half an hour later, two long limos pulled up at the mansion's entrance. As the tall, powerful man walked into the reception room, followed by his assistants, Jason quickly brought Grandma Jones to welcome them. Next, Jason gave Merriweather a detailed explanation of his plan and how he hoped to get his support for it. I'm willing to pay $150 million for 10% of the Jones company shares. This announcement shocked all of them, including Grandma Jones. Grandma had been expecting Merriweather to offer half that amount at most, but I do have one condition. Jason has told me about a cousin of his who is young and very beautiful. 
So, Mrs. Jones, I hope you will give me your blessing to marry your granddaughter. Mr. Merriweather, I hate to disappoint you, but I'm already married. Perhaps you'll consider one of my other granddaughters. She can always get a divorce, can't she? You have no choice but to sell me your shares. Do you think there's anyone else in all of Chicago who'd be willing to pay $150 million for your useless shares? If $150 million isn't enough, I'll make it $225 million. We don't know each other, but I could learn to love you. When he finished speaking, Merriweather grabbed Lily by the wrist. Mr. Merriweather, please let go. Let go of my daughter right now. Everyone else joined in and demanded that Merriweather let Lily go. This was outrageous behavior. Grandma, we can't let the entire family be ruined just to save Lily's reputation. Just as Merriweather was leaning down to kiss her, a powerful hand grabbed his neck from behind. This made him furious. He let go of Lily and as he turned around, get away from my wife. This is none of your damn business. Lily's mine now. The anger flashed in Kevin's eyes as he grabbed Merriweather's arm and pulled him away from Lily. Then he threw the big man 10 feet away. The onlookers were shocked to see Kevin's show of strength, but they knew that Merriweather was a highly trained fighter. Kevin was definitely in trouble now. Kevin and Merriweather were fighting right in the main reception room of the Jones Mansion. Although Kevin had taught Jason a lesson at Grandma Jones' birthday party, Lily doubted that her husband could beat Merriweather. Lily shouted as she ran to grab her phone and call the police. This is an emergency. Come to the Jones family mansion right away. There's a terrible fight. While Kevin was holding his fist, Merriweather turned and gave him a powerful kick to the head. Kevin calmly reached out his left hand and grabbed Merriweather by the ankle. When he squeezed his hands together... Merriweather screamed in agony. Then Kevin grabbed Merriweather's hands and feet and threw him onto the ground with a dull thud. Everyone there, including Merriweather's bodyguards, were stunned. Before Merriweather could get up from the floor, Kevin put his foot on the man's chest, pinning him down. So what were you saying about my wife, you arrogant bastard? I apologize. Not to me, to Lily. I'll do it. I'll do it. Just stop hitting me. Kevin turned the big man to face Lily. Lily, Mrs. Williams, I'm sorry. I should never have done this. Please forgive me. A few minutes later, they all heard sirens approaching the mansion. Officer Emmett walked in, followed by several backup officers. What's this all about? Officer, please help me. She turned to the other officers and asked them to have two more cars sent over. She looked at the Jones family standing in a big circle, then pointed at the men sitting on the floor and added, Take these guys back to the station for questioning. After Officer Emmett finished giving these instructions, she turned to Kevin and Lily and said, Please follow me. Kevin turned to Lily and said, Go home and rest up. I'll be back soon. Then he and Officer Emmett left the Jones mansion. Kevin sat down in the front seat of Officer Emmett's cruiser. She put it into gear and drove through the gate toward the city. After about ten minutes, Kevin asked her, Aren't we going to the police station? Actually, I already know what kind of guy Merriweather is. I can find out all I need to know from the Jones family. That pill I made actually helped you, didn't it? I really didn't expect it to have such a great effect on me. A few hours after you left, I started to feel fantastic, Officer Emmett said enthusiastically. If you have one left over, may I have it? The supplement has already done its work. Why would you want another one? I have a very good friend who needs some help, she explained. I'm not sure I can help. However, there may be a way for me to help your friend. How? Do you know Dominic Archer? You mean you want me to pay for it? Kevin slowly nodded his head. As long as your friend is willing to pay, I can do it, Kevin said calmly. Don't worry, money isn't a problem. My friend is pretty well off. How do you know Dominic Archer? And how much did he pay for your pill? How did I meet him? I'd rather not talk about it. But he didn't pay much, just 500000 Of course, Kevin knew very well that Officer Emmett's friend would never be able to afford to pay that much. Hi, Kevin here. If you are wondering what happens next, then download the Pocket FM app and listen to the exciting episodes of Insta Empire now with the link in the description.